<clears throat> Hello everybody, welcome to today's Daily Devotional. Uh, so our devotional is going to come from an article that was published two days ago. And the title of it, Todd, uh, Daughter of Slain Officer Richard Houston Stuns Mourners with Message of Forgiveness. The daughter of fallen Texas police officer Richard Houston stunned mourners at her father's funeral on Thursday when she shared a message of forgiveness for the man who killed her father. Houston, a 21-year-old veteran of the Mesquite Police Department who succumbed to gunshot wounds last week, left behind a wife, three children, including his 18-year-old daughter, Shelby Houston. This is, uh, this is Richard there. I remember having conversations with my dad about him losing friends and officers in the line of duty. Shelby began her speech at the funeral that was live streamed on Facebook. I've heard all the stories you can think of, but I always had such a hard time with how the suspect is dealt with. Not that I didn't think there should be justice served, but my heart always ached for those who don't know Jesus, their actions being a reflection of that. I thought that was an interesting point, that those who do the terrible things and uh, break the law and so forth is a reflection of people not knowing Jesus and not following Jesus. She continued, I was always told that I would feel differently if it happened to me, but as it happened to my own father, I think I still feel the same. Uh, this talks about how uh, he, uh, how uh, Mr. Houston was, was uh, shot, Officer Houston. When Houston arrived, uh, this fellow, uh, so this is, this is Officer Houston with his daughter, uh, Shelby Houston said during her Thursday speech that while she has felt anger, sadness, grief, and confusion, and part of her wishes she could despise the man who killed her father, she can't get her heart to hate him. All I can do is find myself hoping and praying for this man to truly know Jesus. I thought this might change if the man continued to live, but when I heard the news that he was in stable condition, part of me was relieved. My prayer is that someday down the road I get to spend some time with the man who shot my father, not to scream at him, not to yell at him, not to scold him, but to simply, but to simply to tell him about Jesus. Uh, so this talks about the uh, uh, officer Houston a little bit more and what all what all he accomplished. But I, I thought this was really interesting. Um, it, it's first of all it speaks to her upbringing. I I I would assume that her family. Uh, are uh, religious. Uh, it would seem probably very religious. I don't know what church they go to or anything like that. But uh, I thought this was a really interesting point that I, I hope to get, to spend some time with the man who shot my father to tell him about Jesus. And, and it just kind of got me to thinking, how would we react in that type of a situation? Uh, the anger obviously and the 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 struggle emotional struggle obviously would be that you by your actions have taken my loved one from me okay you've killed my loved one i no longer get to be with my loved one and it was unfair it was wrong it was unlawful and obviously there's a lot of there would be a lot of anger and resentment there however if our loved one is someone who follows Christ, they are doing what the Bible commands them to do, and they are a Christian, paradoxically, there would be a part of us that would recognize that this is actually better for my loved one. It may not be as be, be better for me in so much as I don't get to spend time with my, my loved one anymore, and they were taken from me unfairly and unjustly. But the paradox is that, that my loved one's actually in a better place now. My loved one is, is in paradise uh, because they follow Jesus. And so as Christians, that might temper a little bit of that anger and a little bit of that resentment. Uh, but then to actually, on the flip side of that, to actually say that, I'm hoping and praying for this man to truly know Jesus. I was relieved when he was in stable condition. Uh, I, I want to, to hopefully spend time with this man to, to tell him about Jesus. That, that's just, that, that's going even further than just not having 
anger or as much anger and resentment. It doesn't sound like this young lady has any anger or resentment. Or she, I'm sure she does. She said uh, she said she she kind of um, had some. What does she say? She had some anger, some resentment, uh, but that she couldn't just she couldn't bring her her heart to despise this man. And I just think that's an that's a that's a wonderful example. And and uh, the fact that the headline is. Uh, that the daughter of slain officer Richard Houston stuns mourners with message of forgiveness. It's stunning because that's not the type of attitude most people have when a loved one is killed like this. This is not the type of reaction most people have. Part of that is because most people don't have uh, hope of a resurrection, hope of eternal life with Jesus one day. Part of that also is... Uh, the lack of proper attitude, lack of proper mindset about it. And and no matter how difficult, and obviously this would be, like I said, this would be extremely difficult, uh, even for a Christian to have that type of attitude uh, of, of praying for that individual and so forth. Yet we're told to pray for our enemies in the New Testament. In Matthew chapter 6 in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus as he gives example of the Lord's, what we call the Lord's Prayer, he, after he ends the prayer, he talks about forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. He says in verse 14, for if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Forgiveness is a, is a forgiving, excuse me, forgiving others is a very important component that is stressed in the New Testament, that Christians should be willing and followers of Christ should be willing to do. Now, uh, sometimes, you know, we, we look at this from the perspective of, well, are they willing to repent? Are they, are they mournful? Are they sorrowful that they've done this? Uh, are they uh, recognizing what they did was wrong? And certainly that does help in the process of forgiving somebody. But what if there's somebody who doesn't want forgiveness? What if it's somebody who doesn't care that they've hurt you? They, they, ha they don't care that they've done anything wrong, uh, that they, they just, they did it and, and they're completely unapologetic. Well, for our own soul's benefit and for our own uh, mind, uh, we still have to be able to forgive them, at least forgive them in ourselves. Even if it's, it has nothing to do with that individual, and, and it's obviously it's not about God forgiving them or not, it's, it's us moving past the event, moving past that trespass or that wrong. And so when Jesus says, if you forgive men your trespasses, if you show a heart of mercy, if you show a heart that's willing to forgive, the Father will forgive you. If you don't, and you're hard-hearted, and you refuse to forgive others, your Father will not forgive you. And, and it just goes to show, and of course there are parables that Jesus taught about forgiving others and showing mercy, uh, and there are numerous New Testament writers that speak to forgiving others and praying for our enemies, as I mentioned. But but just, just the fact this young lady, at 18 years old, lost her father in, an, in, a, in, a, in a completely bizarre event where this man... You can go back and read the article uh, about what the the situation was, but it, it really was pointless. There was really no, there really wasn't anything that was involved in as to why this man did this. And yet, this young lady, because her father ended up being killed as a result, uh, she is, is showing uh, uh, an attitude, first of all, that is extremely spiritually mature. That is... Especially even for an 18-year-old who's a who who is a, an outright Christian, someone who's been raised properly, taught properly, and everything, uh, that's a, that's a strong order to have that type of emotional and spiritual maturity to be able to process that in that way. But then the example of forgiving others—that's why the title of the article is "It Stuns Mourners, Stuns Those Who Were Listening." And uh, I think that's a very important. Although God forbid anything like this should happen to any one of us. The process of thinking about well, what if it did what if something like that did happen to us either to us personally uh somebody did something to us or to a loved one how would we how would we react to that 
And again, emotionally, there are certain emotions that are going to come regardless. And like I said, and, and at some point in this article, this young lady mentioned the same thing of going through that, uh, that same process of, of being angry, uh, of being sad. Uh, let's see, where did she say that? Uh, yeah, so she felt anger, sadness, grief, and confusion. Part of her wishes she could despise the man. I, I think we can all relate to this mindset. And emotionally, you're going to feel what you're going to feel. You know, emotionally, emotions come, you're going to be angry. You know, the, the kind of the process of grief, there's going to be anger, there's going to be sadness. All of that's completely understandable. But then when the logic part or the mind's part cuts through that emotion, what does she come to? All I find myself hoping and praying for this man to truly know Jesus. And that's where the maturity exists. That's where that mind kind of processes those emotions and then cuts through them all of the the chaos of those emotions to get to okay well what's important here obviously nothing can bring her father back at this point uh, obviously until until judgment um, and so being angry and and despising this man isn't really going to help the situation at all although it would be understandable if she did but what will help the situation? What will make a difference if this man learns to truly know Jesus? That will make a difference. And her example and being willing to forgive this man and not to hate him or despise him, uh, that that makes a difference. And I, I just, that really stood out to me. Like I said, I have no idea uh, what, what, if she's a member of a denomination or, or what kind of upbringing in terms of, of religion and church, so forth, I, I have no idea. But what a great example of uh, being able to think through emotion, being able to get to what's important now. And uh, to realize that, excuse me, for those of us who have hope in Christ Jesus, those of us who follow Jesus and our loved ones do so, that if something should happen to them, we have the hope of seeing them again one day. And there is nothing that can compare to that hope. Nothing can come close to it. All right. That's the daily devotional for you today. I apologize for my phone uh, going off there. I forgot to put it on silent. Um, so, uh, Lord willing, uh, we'll have our next day of the devotional tomorrow at 630. I hope to see you all then. Thanks, everybody.